Right, so we're going to move on now. We're going to look at Riemann sums. Uh, now, for most people in a first course in calculus, this is probably uh, one of the more technical things that you're going to have to deal with. Right? Among all the things that you see, um, this one is, is probably one of the trickiest. Um, but the idea is very simple. So don't, don't let, you know, you're going to see a fair amount of notation and it's going to look a little bit complicated, but don't let that throw you. Um, the idea is simple enough. Okay, and the idea is, well, we want to calculate, so here's, here's the graph of some function, right? So we have y equals f of x, right? I think in the textbook they even specify the function, like 4x minus x squared, right? It's a, it's a parabola, okay? Um, so we want to calculate this area, right? So we want to calculate the area under the curve, this whole area here. Um, and we sort of know the answer, right? We know that area should be, well, the integral from 0 to 4 of fx dx, right? Um, so this is how we define the definite integral. We define definite integral as giving us this area. Um, okay, it's an answer, but it's not a very useful answer, is it? Because how do I calculate that? Even if I know, even if I know that my function is something like 4x minus x squared, and I put that in. What good does it do me, right? At this point, not a whole lot. So, where do we go? Well, what we do is we say, okay, look, I don't know how to calculate this area, right? I don't have, I don't have the tools to compute that area. So, so what, what sort of areas do I know how to compute? I know circles. I know triangles. I know rectangles, right? And rectangles are, are pretty much the easiest thing, right? Everyone knows how to calculate the area of a rectangle, length times width. Fine. Or maybe width times height, if we're thinking of, you know, height here. Okay. Well, we can do that, right? So we say, okay, let's, you know, we don't know the area of this shape. So we replace the shape by, by a rectangle, right? Maybe a square in this case. So we say, you know, let's just, let's just put that in. Here you go. Um, so we say, well, that area, you know, maybe it's roughly uh, four... 4 times 4, 16. Not a very good estimate, right? Say that's terrible. Look, you've got all this, all this extra here, all this extra here. This is a massive overestimate. It's not good at all. Okay. How do we improve? Well, we can improve if we maybe divide things in two. So we go kind of halfway through and we say, what if we what if we use a couple of rectangles instead, right? And, and then we say, well, how do we decide on the heights of those rectangles? There's a few, few options, right? Um, I could decide that um, for each of my rectangles, I'm going to take the value of the function at sort of the, the left-hand corner of that rectangle, right? The left, end, the left end point of the interval that we have down here, right? So from 0 to 2, Oh, my height is zero. So then I have, a, I have one that looks like that. This seems so great. Uh, from two to four, I take this, right? And now I have these two. I have one rectangle, which is not a rectangle at all. And then I add this other one. And I say, is that, is that gonna work? Is that any better? Um, well, you know what, maybe, maybe it is, right? Because, um, yeah, I lost this area here, but I gained that area there, right? So this time I've got a loss and a gain, they cancel each other out, and maybe I'm, I'm closer than I was when I just kind of had two extra bits. Maybe, right? So again, we say, how can we improve? Well, one way I could improve is maybe, maybe instead of choosing the left endpoint, I choose, well, the right endpoint is going to give me the same thing, right? So maybe I split the difference, and I say, let's go, let's go halfway in between. Um, let's take this rectangle this rectangle, right? So I'm bringing the height of the rectangles down, right? So that's going to deal with this overcorrection, right? Now I'm, I'm losing a bit up here, but I'm gaining a bit over here. So maybe that's an improvement. And you say, well, how else could I improve? Well, another way I could improve is instead of just taking those midpoints and using it to evaluate my function, maybe I just I subdivide again. So maybe I, instead of doing two rectangles, I do one two, three, four rectangles. And 
maybe I decide to do left endpoints again. So I have a rectangle here, which is nothing. And then I have this rectangle. And then I have this rectangle. And then I have that rectangle. Uh, and I think, okay, is that any better? Maybe. Or maybe I, I go with those midpoints again. So I do, I do this rectangle, and I do this rectangle, and I do this rectangle, right? and I do that rectangle. And I start thinking, okay, how am I doing there? Right? So in this one, I've got this bit here, which I shouldn't have. I've got this bit, which I'm missing. Right? Again, I, I'm gaining this, but I'm losing that. Gaining this you know, bit, losing that. Um, pieces kind of cancel. And, and you kind of, you keep going, you, proceed, you repeat this procedure and, and you keep going, you keep going um, until you're at a point where your picture maybe looks something like this. You've got your parabola and instead of choosing, you know, two points or four points, we choose, you know, I don't know, like a dozen points or more, right? So we start, we take our interval and we divide it up into pieces. And they don't have to be equal pieces, but often they are, okay? Um, and, and so we take these as bases for a bunch of rectangles. And again, we gotta decide on height. So how do we choose the height? Well, again, common choices for heights are left endpoints, right endpoints, or midpoints. So maybe, maybe we go with midpoints, right? So then we say, okay, in the middle of each of these intervals, I'm gonna choose a point, right? And then I'm gonna work out what's the value of my function at each of those points, right? So I go up to the graph. That's gonna give me my y value. All right. Okay. We go up, we go up, 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 there, 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 okay? We mark those points. Okay, and then we mark off those heights. Okay, and finally, we draw in some rectangles. So we draw this rectangle. And we draw that rectangle. And we go up there, up to there, right? Up to there, up to there, 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 okay? Okay, and we put those rectangles in. And then we say, you know what? Yeah, if I add up the areas of those rectangles, yeah, it's still not exactly the area that I started with, but it's pretty close, right? I mean, that, that pile of rectangles is starting to look an awful lot closer to that area that I'm interested in, right? Um, and so that's what we do. We, t we take these rectangles, right? We, we get, you know, we divide up into these areas, area one, area two, area three, down to some last one we might call area N, Right? And we say, okay, so the area, the better approximation for the area is it's going to be approximately this sum. First area, the second area, down to that last area. Right? And then we say, okay, how are we computing each of those areas? Well, you're, you're choosing some points. Right? Um, you're, first, you're choosing these points, which we might call, um, so we might call this sort of x1, x2, x3, um, down to the last one, All right? So we're gonna go up by n, right? So this last one is gonna be say xn plus one because we added n, right? Um, by the way, uh, you, in, in, this is how they're numbered in apex. In, in some instructors might start at zero and go to n. So you might see that index shifted by a little bit. Um, don't, don't let that throw you off. Don't let it concern you. Okay, this, it's a minor detail that, that ultimately isn't going to matter that much in the end. Um, but the point is we just need some way of counting.
okay? First point to the last point. We keep track of these, right? Um, and then these points in here, maybe we call these C1, right? Maybe the first point, right? C2, C3, down to the last one, Cn, okay? And such points, right? And maybe we've chosen this width, right? So the width, which we're going to call delta x, as we like to do, is it's just the difference between two of these points, right? So i here, i is this dummy index, could be any number um, from, from 1 up to n, right? i is some number from 1 to n, okay? And, and typically what we want is we want each delta x to be the same, okay? It doesn't have to be, but it makes it simpler for us. And we say, so, so if we take an interval of length, you know, here it's 4, but in general maybe it's, it's say, b minus a, right? We take an interval of length b minus a, we're dividing into n equal pieces, so we have something that looks like that, right? And what's the height? Well, the height, you know, is going to be f of ci, right? Because we're choosing one of these points, c1, c2, c3, right? i could be anything from 1 to n. And we plug it into our function to get the height. So what we get is something that looks like f of c1 times delta x, f of c2 times delta x, down to f of cn times delta x, okay? And that's our Riemann sum. Yeah, that, that's all it is. That's what a Riemann sum is. Um, now, where things maybe get a little bit intimidating is, is we like to use summation notation. So you might see this written as sum i going from 1 to n f of ci times delta x, right? And, and if for some reason you decided that all your intervals were not going to be the same length, then maybe each delta x is different, and so you should put an i there as well, right? Um, but in the end, you're going to have something that looks like this. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to expand on these ideas as we move forward, explore a little bit, and try to figure out what exactly we can do with it. But the idea is, is one of these kind of common calculus themes, that uh, if you can't do it exactly, you do it approximately, and then you figure out how to improve that approximation, and maybe even eventually um, make your approximation exact, possibly via some limiting process, and that's exactly what's going to happen here.